As the next speaker, uh, I want to introduce Mr. Tahar Boumedra, who is a former advisor to the UNSRG SRSG in Iraq and a former chief of the human rights section of UNAMI. Yes, thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I had the opportunity to be uh, working with the United Nations in Baghdad. And uh, I was witnessing and witnessed on the ground a number of very disturbing situations of violation of human rights in Iraq but not only by the Iraqi uh, government, but by the intervention of the Iranian regime. And you know very well that there, is, there are special institutions organized in order to achieve this uh, interference in the uh, neighboring states. Besides the, uh, the guards, the, the revolutionary guards who uh, commit untold crimes against their own people. Now, I would like to focus on the role of the United Nations because when the Ashrafis were persecuted and indeed slaughtered in Camp Ashraf, the United Nations used to use me to go and do the body count. And then they will issue a general statement requesting an independent inquiry. And there will be no follow-up on this request. And when I was following up on these issues as the chief of human rights office, of the UNAMI, I was told, why do you want to revive a forgotten issue? So my fear today is that the same thing will happen with these governmental institutions where states will cover up for uh, friendly states, where there, is, there will be trade horsing or horse trading, rather, uh, about human rights, the values of the United Nations, and political expediency. So this is why I think it's still time for us to call for an independent inquiry, probing into these massacres that took place, not only in 1988, but from the time the Khomeini regime uh, took power till today. And you know very well that Iran is one of the countries that execute most. And they even went as far as issuing a special letter to the United Nations telling them that we will not accept a moratorium on death penalty. It's one of the very few states in the United Nations that's issued this letter. So it's clear the government of Iraq will never cooperate on any inquiry. And it's clear that a consensus among states, members of the Human Rights Council, is very difficult to achieve. And also it's clear that even in New York and General Assembly, it's quite difficult to achieve any consensus on this issue, whether in the Security Council or in the General Assembly. So I think it's left to the civil society, the NGOs, to play their full role in first uh, making the international community aware of the scale of these massacres that took place and still taking place and also making the international community be aware that there will never be an independent inquiry without the effective work of the civil society and the NGOs. And it's really our role to make sure that 
the United Nations will play its role regardless of the interests of the states, members of this organization. So the reality is that the evidence actually existing about the crimes that took place, particularly in the summer of 1988, are there and it's very difficult to uh, uh, question them. And with the latest revelations on the issue, it became clear that a crime against humanity actually did take place and it's still taking place. The United Nations has recently renewed its, uh, its agencies, its uh, organs, its procedures. And I think the United Nations should take this opportunity to regain, rebuild its credibility in terms of uh, addressing issues of human rights. There will be very soon some changes in New York there are some changes here in Geneva. New procedures have been put in place. And I really think that it's time now for the civil society to put pressure on the United Nations special procedures and other specialized organs to play their role fully in probing this situation prevailing in Iraq. I say that and I thank you very much.